Hello everybody, um, this is Luis Escobar from Virginia Tech. In this video, I would like to share with you uh, some examples and ideas of these um, connections between the geographic space and the environmental space, especially applied to ecological niche modeling. So generally when we are mapping diseases, we have this bias, it's a spatial bias where we think we design our studies and we make the interpretation of our models in, in the sense of maps, in a geographic or spatial uh, dimension. So we think in terms of what is there uh, in, our, in our coordinates and how um, the, the species occur in their geographic distribution uh, but when we are doing um, ecology, especially in ecological niche modeling, we want to think in environmental dimensions. For example, not in maps, but in the conditions that are happening in those maps, like climates, that, like temperature, like um, wind or salinity, or depends on which kind of analysis we are doing. We want to think in how those environmental dimensions occur. Uh, and then after we do our thinking in environmental space, we can do interpretations in maps. But ecological niche modeling uh, is developed in an environmental space where we use environmental variables uh, to make access, where we are going to study where our species occurs or doesn't occur. Uh, so we can make some inferences of the tolerances, which then we uh, interpret as an ecological niche. Um, here, I want to present the theory of the Hutchinson's duality, which basically tries to demonstrate that what happens in geographic space may not necessarily happen in the same magnitude in the environmental space. So here I have a map on the left uh, in geographic space. So you, I have longitude and latitude, and you can see that I have different environmental conditions. It could be temperature, it could be land cover, it could be salinity of the soil. It could be anything. But these are conditions happening in a map. For example, here I have, let's imagine, um, a large forest, maybe, or this great area. Then I have these, um, like more uh, grass conditions. And then we have less grass until we have uh, like tundra, for example. So we have different types of habitats here in a map, and you can see that the most abundant conditions are in gray, and the less abundant are these conditions happening in green here. When we think in environmental space, we can take all these conditions and make a map, but here you can see that now the most abundant conditions are in green. So this could this, this happens when we're in a mountain. It's a small area, but we have so many different conditions as we climb the mountain. So the mountain has areas that are at different temperatures with different habitats, but maybe this gray area is a desert that is very broad and large area, but it's actually very uh, homogeneous in terms of the environment. So it's not, particularly diverse in terms of environments and is not occupying a large space environmentally. So this is the Hutchinson duality, which says that um, for every point in the environmental space can happen in many points in the geographic space. Another example is this classic uh, where we have a map of South America here, or the climates of South America with conditions that are cold in yellow or green, and conditions that are more tropical or hot eh, here in red. 
And you can see that in Ecuador, we have two cities, Quito and Guayaquil. They are very close. You can drive from Quito to Guayaquil. And then we have another city in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, uh, where we have a large distance between Guayaquil and Rio. You need to fly. It's, it's, it's a very large distance, but at, at least in geographic space, because when we think in env environmental space, and I have all the environments of South America here, you can see that now Quito is very far from Guayaquil. But Guayaquil is very close to Rio de Janeiro. Why is that? That is happening because Quito happens in cold conditions in the Andes, very low temperatures. In Guayaquil, uh, we have coastal conditions. In, uh, similar to Rio de Janeiro, we have coastal conditions. These two are warm areas, and Quito is a cold area. So you can see, again, the Hutchinson's duality here, where things um, are measured in terms of their, their environmental distance. We saw before in another video that the concept of niche began uh, or was proposed in ecology by Joseph Grinnell uh, after the study of the California, California treasure. This is the map of the species. So you can imagine that maybe the central uh, portion of its range is somewhere here. This will be the central uh, a part of the species distribution, right? At least in geographic dimensions, that makes sense. But when we think in geographic, this is the central part of the range. And these points here are areas where they found the species. The blue points are records of the species. In gray, here we have all the climates of a Western United States. So here you see that in terms of the environments, in temperature and precipitation, we have all the environments of the study area. We have the map of the distribution of the species here in brown, and we have the localities of the species in blue. But notice that the central portion in the geographic space is not in the central a distribution of, of the species. Actually, it's in an age, it's in a border. The central portion of the uh, geographic, uh, of the environmental distribution, or the center of the niche, is this white star, which actually in the geography happens here, in the southern portion of the species range. So here again, we can see that what happens in geography not necessarily happens in the environmental space. So here again, I have where the central portion in the geographic space is happening, not in the central portion in the environmental space. So taking these ideas into account, we need to understand how are we collecting the information in environmental dimensions, which we then um, project to maps, to make interpretations of the potential distribution of or um, infectious disease. So um, uh, we were seeing examples of Marburg fever. And here you can see that in environmental dimensions, we can measure that and then we can project that to geographic maps. We can do the same for from for a uh, other diseases like vector borne diseases, where we can estimate where it happens in geography. And maybe you can see that even when this is happening in different continents, environmentally, we have a cluster. We have consistent conditions. And we saw before the map uh, here of where all breaks are happening in fish, where the disease is happening in different continents in Asia, in the Americas, and Europe, but environmentally, the disease occurs in very consistent conditions. So this is the summary of how to do this interpretation of data in environmental and geographic space in ecological niche modeling applied to infectious diseases. Thank you.